The fire at Grenfell told us in the most devastating way imaginable about the dangers of flammable cladding. Since that fatal night, many living in buildings with a similar cladding have found themselves facing not just the worry, but also the vast expense of living with a material deemed illegal or unsafe. It isn't just cladding. Flammable insulation lying within many properties is making them expensive to insure and impossible to sell. One building in Manchester, Transport House, has just presented its residents with a renovation bill for £97,000 each. Is anyone willing to accept the blame for this? And how do we find out the scale of the problem? Here's Lewis Goodall. Do you know how safe your home is? Whether it was built properly? How much it might cost to correct the problems? Well, the leaseholders of Transport House in Salford have all too clear an idea. The whole ethos of the building when it was originally developed and sold to us by Oa Valley was that it was available to key work people and a shared ownership with the option to step up and buy more and more so that it would be affordable to give us a foot on the ladder. Next week is four years since the catastrophe at Grenfell Tower. In its wake, changes were made to rules about what materials are allowed on tall buildings, their cladding. But there are other, less well-known changes now being made to government regulations for what is within buildings, like insulation and cavity walls. Changes required, ministers say, to make buildings safe from flame. Freeholders across the country are commissioning those assessments, and leaseholders in Transport House, first built in 2005, are among the first to be told what their problems are. So, John, yeah, just, just show us what this material is here. Well, uh, yeah, the, the facade and uh, insulation is just ordinary uh, polystyrene, which is flammable, and it just has a thin coating uh, over the outside to make it weatherproof. And that, that runs throughout the entire building? Uh, yes, yeah. And, it, and it's, a, it's the main insulation for the building? That's yeah, the it's thing. the insulation and the... Um, uh, yeah, uh, and, and the facade. facade. Uh, so, um, and it's flammable? And it's flammable, yeah. It doesn't resist the required um, level of, um, uh, of transmission of uh, flame. The problem here, then, is mainly the lack of fire cavity breaks and a flammable insulation, and it's going to cost a fortune to fix. Several weeks ago, the leaseholders received this letter from the freeholder, Irwell Valley Homes. They said... We have been working with chartered surveyors, fire engineers and architects to explore possible solutions to resolve the fire safety issues associated with the external render and compartmentalisation at Transport House. The full removal and replacement of the render and fire cavity breaks is estimated to cost £3 million, including fees and VAT. This is approximately £97,000 per apartment. They go on to say that they, the freeholders, must carry out the work and leaseholders have to meet the cost. Great. Yeah. Owell Valley has given no timescale for when this will happen, but it has left the residents in a state of despair. They have no prospect of paying the money, and in the meantime, their properties have become worthless. Yeah. I had, I had potential offers, but then obviously... I've never had much. Yeah. yeah. I've always shared apartments or shared um, houses, so to actually have my own space with what I thought was just like this amazing view of the city, it was exciting. I didn't have a lot of money, but I could just about make ends meet and have my own place, and that just meant the world to me. Matt bought his flat for less than the 97000 he's now being quoted to repair it. He desperately needs to move to a house with his daughter, and he can't. My estate agent said, yeah, I'm going to have to take the apartment off the market. And um, then I started getting a little bit anxious because all of a sudden I was now trapped in limbo. I didn't know how long this was going to go on for. I didn't know how many other buildings might be affected by this. Um, I couldn't sell. And it's been going on for nearly two years now. So you can't sell this property? No, it's valued at zero. The government has announced the Building Safety Fund, one billion to help leaseholders with renovations. But that fund covers buildings 18 metres or higher. Transport House is 14 metres. And in any case, it's only for cladding. They've also said they will set up a loan scheme with cost caps at £50 a month. But for Transport House leaseholders, it would take 161 years to pay off that debt. 
all of this during the pandemic. This was a summary of the lease. And the mental and sometimes physical health of residents has deteriorated. Last night, I don't, I'm lucky if I went to bed at three o'clock and I was up at six. So um, I don't think I really slept, slept. And it's just the constant worry. Um, it's like, what's going to happen tomorrow? If, God forbid, I hope it doesn't happen, but I've worked for nothing and I'll be homeless. And I'll be, it's like I've done everything for nothing and the world's just crashing down on me. The ice to the right, 322. The nose to the left, 256. As recently as late ice April, the, the right. government defeated efforts in the Commons to limit leaseholders' exposure for the fifth time, with a significant Tory rebellion in the mix. There is anger at Transport House from leaseholders at Ministers and their freeholder, Irwell Valley. Why on earth should they be the ones who pay the price? Because the developer built them, you oversaw it, you're the freeholder, and the government regulated them. You all have partly res part responsibility, they have none. Okay, this is, this is a very, very difficult situation. And as I said before, I have utter sympathy with the leaseholders in this situation. Actually, and with, the greatest, with the greatest respect, I don't think they need your sympathy. <laughs> you know, your no, sort of sympathy ain't much good, because, you know? Because I feel that way, and because our intention here is about making their homes safe for them, then for me, it's very much about we need to find a collaborative solution to this. This is much bigger than Transport House. If just a small percentage of the buildings constructed in recent years have these problems or anything like them, it'll affect thousands of people. If it's a large percentage, it may even have the potential to destabilize the housing market itself. Lewis Goodall with that report. Well, in a statesman, a uh, spokesperson for the Ministry for Housing told Newsnight building owners are responsible for making their buildings safe, including the owners of Transport House, and we expect them to take swift action to identify and fix defects, including where work has been substandard, without passing costs on to leaseholders. Well, Sir Peter Bottomley is the father of the House and led a group of 32 Tory rebel MPs in a failed attempt, finally, to write a greater leaseholder protection into the recent Fire Safety Act. If we can pick up with you, Sir Peter, then, um, where do you think responsibility lies, then? What would you be saying to, to the people who are getting nearly £100,000 bills like this? It lies everywhere except with the residential leaseholders. They don't own the building. They didn't construct the building. They didn't inspect the building. They didn't regulate the components used in the building. These homes were put up in 2004, 17 years ago, and it shouldn't have taken national government, local government, the builders, the owners, the freeholders, the component suppliers all this time. Quite clearly, these people cannot pay. Many of these homes are worth, were worth less than they were built in 2004, even before Grenfell Tower's tragedy. So I think government needs to face up to their responsibility of saying we've got to bail out these people and then we government will make arrangements to chase those who are responsible and if the extra cost to leaseholders beyond the five billion that government is arranging of which they hope to get four billion back from other people but they won't go to leaseholders if there's an extra 10 billion to find i suggest government say look our contribution should be about three billion insurance companies should be about three billion local authorities building control should be about two billion. Developers and landlords should be contributing as well. Component manufacturers, but most of all, the insurance companies, because they have been insuring the developers and the professionals, the architects and the quantity surveyors Ex who agree to have unsafe building. You, you heard what Lewis said at the end of his report there. We have no idea the scale of this. I mean, you just, it could have been going on for decades. It could have been going on the length and breadth of the country. We, we just don't know, do we? We don't, but we haven't bothered to take the long view, as Jonathan Friedland uh, impressed on us after the fire of London, but they set up fire courts, and within 10 years, they've rebuilt most of the centre of London. We haven't done anything like that. We're four years on from Grenfell, and we've got these leaseholders facing a prospect of a life of, of loss of their equity and having to be paying out money which they can't afford, many of them. I think that we've really got to get the Prime Minister to get together uh, a round table to work out what the problems are the best estimate of what the costs are going to be and the best way of filling the coffers to get the work done so that apartments are safe and saleable and then chase those who are responsible. Do, do but of course, the only, people who can't, the only people who can't sue 
those responsible are the leaseholders, yeah. because they haven't got an interest in the property. They're the only tenants who are being forced to pay. Private tenants don't, social tenants don't. These leaseholders, who are by law only tenants, are having to. So what would you say to them with a £97,000 bill? Would you just say, don't pay it? Well, for those who can't, they don't need my advice. I, I think I'd be saying to uh, Earl Valley and others, get together with government and say, let's face the consequences of the situation we're in and let's find the solution which will work. Mm. The British are supposed to be pragmatic. The Prime Minister is a pretty pragmatic person. I'm sure the Secretary of State would be too. And if you tell the Chancellor, uh, if Rishi Sunak had to go to Salford and actually see what the problems were, I think he'd say to his people, find the arrangements which get the money spent to make them safe, make them saleable, which is good for the housing market, well, and then we'll chase those who are responsible. Let me, let me ask you briefly on that last point um, about the Bank of England's assessment of whether Britain's building safety scandal could cause a new financial crisis. I mean, you know, a lot of people remember where, where the last one originally um, started in, in the US with subprime housing. Do you, I mean, do you think it's inconceivable this could be the same sort of thing? It's not inconceivable. I, I, I think government would probably respond in time, within time, to stop it being too contagious. But the fact is, a large number of the homes built over the last uh, 15 years these apartments, sometimes with encouragements to people to buy when they couldn't really afford it, and the same thing's going on now with, with some of the help to buy things, that government has to step in and take responsibility for justice, for opportunity, for fairness. Beautiful. The money needs pro being provided now and needs getting back from those who are responsible. Okay. The resources haven't got the money and they were not responsible. So the, the issues are very well, clear, and I, I, I could help the Prime Minister and the Chancellor solve it. So probably could everyone at Salford. I'm sure he's listening and your phone is ringing. Peter Bottomley, thank you very much. Thank